Welcome back to another riveting episode of Disclosure brought to you by the good people at The Voice of Prophecy, the oldest, continuous, faith-based broadcast on the face of the planet, bringing you good news and inspiration since 1929. And right now, there are a lot of people out there who could use a little bit of good news and inspiration because as I sit here in my bedroom attempting to do radio from a place that could hardly be described as a professional studio, well, the whole world seems to be on lockdown because of COVID-19. And I know most of you are sick and tired of turning on the radio and finding more bad news every single day. And believe me, I understand. I am right there with you. With the economy teetering with uncertainty, with tornadoes recently touching down in places across the country, with people who are dying from this brand new disease, I am personally starting to wish that I could turn on the radio or turn on Twitter or check Facebook or check any other news feed and see anything. I mean, anything but coronavirus. But... As of the moment that I'm recording this right here in my bedroom, this is the world we live in. And for some families, it has been incredibly bad news, especially if a member of your family tends to be one of the vulnerable people who succumbs to the disease. And the reason we're all on lockdown right now is because, well, we think we know who the vulnerable people are, you know, those with underlying conditions, those who are older And yet there are just enough outliers out there that we have no choice but to all stay home and protect everybody. There are people who get this and succumb to it, and they don't really know why. So, we are locked up at home, all of us. Except, of course, for this handful of people who somehow seem to believe that just because they are Christians, they are now immune to this COVID-19 pandemic. Kind of like the pastor I saw on the news recently who decided that his church would keep on meeting in person. They would not be practicing social distancing. They would not be staying home. And the reason he gave, and I quote, is this, God is bigger than the coronavirus. And of course, God is bigger than the coronavirus. But the follow-up to that story is a few weeks later, that very pastor was dead of coronavirus. Then I saw other people who decided and I quote again, that because we are covered by the blood of Jesus a few weeks ago, they could just go to Easter services and nothing would happen to them. And to be really honest, folks, that bothered me as a Bible-believing Christian, because while I absolutely believe in faith, and while I absolutely believe in prayer, listen, there is a massive difference between faith and presumption. I mean, just go back to the story that you find in Matthew chapter 4 where the devil takes Jesus to the top of the temple and he actually quotes scripture. He uses the Bible, a quote from Psalm 91, to try and convince Jesus that, look, you could just recklessly throw yourself off the temple and God will save you because the angels are going to catch you before you hit the ground. And you'll remember what Jesus said on that occasion, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. In other words, you do not take your faith in the scriptures to unreasonable conclusions. You don't lift a couple of verses out of context and then build a theory of faith. Because if you haven't already noticed, God's people do get hurt. It happens all the time. We are not immune to the problems that happen on a fallen planet just because we have faith in Christ. That is not the point of our faith. That is not the point of saving faith. Don't ever forget. Paul had a condition that was never cured, a thorn in his flesh, he called it. Timothy had what the Bible calls frequent ailments. Job, who will be in our topic today, Job was covered with boils. That means that you and I are subject to the same problems as everybody else, the problems that come from living in a fallen world. And Jesus is teaching us in Matthew chapter chapter 4, that we do not have permission to be reckless. You will cause nothing but embarrassment for the cause of Christ. Here's what we do have. We have promises from God. Promises that if we live according to certain principles, we can eliminate unnecessary suffering, or what the book of Proverbs in chapter 23 might call wounds without cause. And one of those biblical principles you will notice if you read the whole Bible 
you will find social distancing in the Bible. Go to the book of Leviticus. People with horrible diseases like leprosy were sent out of the camp all the time until it could be determined whether or not they were dangerous for everybody else. So read the whole Bible. Don't practice presumption. And enough about that, I guess. I just want to urge all of you to pay attention to the entire scriptures. Um, Because, listen, everybody's watching Christians right now. And you know the secular media does not need an excuse to try and make faith in Christ look ridiculous. So don't give them one. Enough of my rant, though. We need, do need to get into our topic for today. We're going to start a new six-part series called Peace is an Inside Job. And this is a compelling series of Bible studies that will help us develop what the Bible might call peace that passes understanding. And I'm just fortunate enough that the author of these studies, there are six of these in the series, the author of these series just happens to work with me right here at the Voice of Prophecy. Dr. Kurt Johnson, head of our Voice of Prophecy Discover Bible School, longtime author and Bible teacher. Kurt, I'm hoping that through the miracle of technology, you are still out there listening to me drone on. You there? I am still here, Sean, and it's a pleasure to join you today. Ah, it is good. It is good to hear your voice. I wish and long for the day that we are all back in the Voice of Prophecy office looking each other, you know, in the eye. How are you doing on the lockdown down at your end there in uh, on the West Coast? Well, I'm I'm doing fine. I I'm with you. I'm getting tired of staying at home. Uh, yesterday yeah. I did venture out. We're we're fortunate to have a local park that is still open that we can walk the trails by the river. So I went out for about 40 minutes and got some fresh air and that felt good tired of sitting in the house yeah. yeah so am i hey let's take a look at these series because you know i've i've eaten up a whole bunch of time already and this is it, it I, I love your piece is an inside bible study series what prompted you to put this series together well you know sean as as i as we all live life you come to the place where um you want to i just wanted to find out what does the bible say about meeting the everyday challenges that we all face. Uh, You know, we face stress and fear and worry and guilt and grief. And and these are the topics of each one of these study guides is on each one of these areas. And so what we basically do in these study guides is we take a look at a person in the Bible who experienced these challenges in their daily life and how they coped. And so we take a look at the story, we see how they cope, we learn lessons that we can apply to everyday life to help us deal with some of the things you just described in your opening that we are that we're that we're faced with and, and God will guide us through that. And so we we find these this help in each each one of the scriptures that we look at today. Well let's let's dig into today's lesson. I think the first one is on stress. Who needs it? Well I don't need any more. <laughs> I don't know about you, Kurt, but I I sure don't need any more stress. I guess zero stress means you're dead. You want to have a little bit of stress in your life, but maybe not this level. Um, Take us into this guide a little bit. Talk to us about um, what the Bible says about stress. All right. Uh, Well, Sean, our our first study guide, the the person, the Bible character that we study to find some solutions and help in dealing with stress is is Job. Um, In fact, if we turn in our Bibles to Job chapter 1, we can take a look at at, at the introduction. I'll uh, I'll tell you what, I'll just, I'll start reading with verse 1 to get the setting and just kind of walk through the, walk through the scripture. Then you can, we'll we'll just comment together. Um, Job chapter 1, verse 1, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. Hmm. And so here we here we find Job since he lived in the land of us. Uh, most historians and commentaries they're not quite sure of the exact location of us, but you know it's you know Bob obviously it's uh, in the uh, Middle East, the, the biblical area of that we study in Scripture. It's kind of like you and I saying, right. well, you, you live in the Midwest and I live in the Pacific Northwest. Um, as far as the location. But it says here that he was blameless, he was upright, he feared God, and shunned evil. Um, wh- what do you think, Sean, well, when you hear a, those words, blameless, is, upright? <laughs> well, I don't think of me, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> I think of Jesus, you know, blameless mm-hmm. and upright. But here's a man of good character. You know, God, in spite of who we are, 
sort of leans in our direction once in a while and says, I love this guy. And there's a few people like that. Abraham was a friend of God. David was a man after God's own heart in spite of his faults. And uh, here we have Job. It looks like these people lean in God's direction. They love God. They're longing to be more like God. And so that resonates with God, it seems, and, and he honors that. Yeah, and, and you know, and it shares here, too, that I found very interesting. It says he shunned evil. And I, I looked that up in the commentary, and it said that it meant that Job intentionally turned away from anything that was dangerous. So anything that would harm his walk with God, he, he, he turned and wanted to follow God. Um, so he's a deliberate disciple. That's right. He made proper choices. Um, and, and as we continue reading, it says that he had seven sons and three daughters, uh, mm-hmm. that he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys. He had a large household of servants, and he was one of the greatest, or you might say probably wealthiest people in the region right. of that he, that he lived. And uh, as you go through this, basically it talks about the fact that one day Satan and, and God are having a conversation. And right. And Job comes up, <laughs> and it's an interesting conversation where, where uh, God says to Satan, my, man, my, my, my uh, follower that I have, Job, that we've created, uh, there's no one like him. He's a man of faith. And Satan, in essence, says, well, it's because you have blessed him with wealth. You've given him everything. And uh, God says, no, he, he will follow me no matter what. And so Job says, well, I'll show you. I'm going to cause some difficulties to come into his life. And God said, well, don't right. take his life. And then that brings us into where we are in this study of the stress now that comes upon Job in his life. Okay. Well, we have just a, you know about 90 seconds to go before the first break, but let's, let's dig into it at least. Let's start reading through it a little bit. Okay. Um, well, in our study guide, we have, we have listed the beginning with verse 13 through 22, of the difficulties that came to Job. And we, we find in those, in those verses that um, a messenger comes to Job and tells him that the oxen were plowing, the donkeys were feeding, and a group came in and raided them and killed the servants and stole all the donkeys and the oxen. Um, wow. And then, then it mentions in verses 16 that another messenger came to Job and told him that fire fell out of heaven and destroyed all the sheep and the servants that were watching them. And then you find, uh, then you find in the uh, next verses that it says that while, while that servant was speaking, another one showed up and said that the Chaldeans raided the camels, stole them, and killed the servants. And then the final messenger comes to Job and tells him that his sons and his daughters were having a meal together in one of the sons' homes. And a wow. great wind, you guess we would call it a hurricane, a tornado, right. came in and destroyed all of them. All right, let's push the pause button. I'm right up against a hard break. We'll be right back with Job after this. Are you searching for answers to life's toughest questions like, where is God when we suffer? Can I find real happiness, or is there any hope for our chaotic world? The Discover Bible Guides will help you find the answers you're looking for. Visit us at BibleStudies.com or give us a call at 888-456-7933 for your free Discover Bible Guides. Study online on our secure website or have the free guides mailed right to your home. There is never a cost or obligation. The Discover Bible Guides are our free gift to you. Find answers in guides like, Does My Life Really Matter to God? and A Second Chance at Life. You'll find answers to the things that matter most to you in each of the 26 Discover Bible Guides. Visit BibleStudies.com and begin your journey today to discover answers to life's deepest questions. And we are back from the break. I let that last segment ride up hard against the break, and I rushed 
poor Kurt, who was explaining the story of Job. Here we have an upright and righteous man, a man who has favor in God's eyes, and you will notice that calamity still fell on this guy. He is not exempt from the troubles of this world or from the devil's attention. And so we were looking at the story in Job chapter 1, where under you know Satan's attack, Job begins to experience some of the same catastrophes that you and I experience in our lives. So um, he loses his children, he loses his property, he loses just about everything. And that was in sort of the first portion of the book of Job, Job chapter 1. We were looking at verse 13 onward, and then I suddenly cut you off, Kurt, because we were up against a break. I'll see if I can behave better than that. I normally in studio have all kinds of help to make me sound professional, and now I've got nothing. It's just me. This is how I actually am without help. Well, I think it works just fine, Sean. We're we're in good shape. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Here's the real truth about me, folks. If I'm locked in my bedroom, I'm a wreck. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, let's pick up the story again. So here's this righteous guy, and I know I keep underlining mm-hmm. that, but I kind of opened the show with that thought. We are not exempt from trouble in this world, and this is not Job's fault, and these horrible things are happening to him anyway. Yeah, and what I find interesting, Sean, is in verse 20, after he gets the word, that everything, like you mentioned, he lost all of his property, his children were killed, all 10 children. In verse 20, right. it says he tore his robe, he shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshipped. And hmm. you know what's amazing to me is through all of this, when he tore his robe and shaved his head, that's what they did you know, in his time when you were, when you were mourning. But he fell to right. the ground and worshipped. And, and he says... And he says that verse that we here read at least years ago in funerals, Naked I came from my mother's womb, naked I shall return. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then it says, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. Um, You know, that's uh, why I say, Kurt, that I have often failed the Job test mm -hmm. because, you know, I like to talk a big game, but then when life gets hard, I'm tempted to shake my fist at heaven and ask God why he did this to me. And I think that's one of the things that comes out of this story is God didn't do this, and Job has faith enough to recognize that the evil in this world is not God's fault. Yep. Yeah, and I I agree. And and, and Sean, let's do a little application here as... as, um, as you look at the things that touched Job's life, his experience, yeah, um, what what were the things that we see here that brought him stress that maybe we see and experience today ourselves in everyday life? Well, my goodness, this this story certainly is apropos for what the entire world is going through right now. Because look at look at Job's. Um, calamities. He faces the loss of his livelihood. When you lose your flocks, that's your wealth, your livelihood. So he's losing his savings. He's losing his wealth, just like the market started tanking when we shut down the world economy. Um, He's got these Chaldeans that come and, you know, perform raids on his property. He's got, I guess, what somebody today would call a black swan event. You can't predict this. It's an uncontrollable circumstance, nothing you can do to stop it. And then on top of that, he's got the loss of family. These are the same things that scare us now. We're all sitting on pins and needles. What if one of my family members gets this disease that's going around and uh, they're one of the vulnerable ones? These are exactly the same things I think that we're all sitting afraid of right now. Yeah, and and, and I agree. You know, you you think about all of this. um, You lose your business. You lose your children. You lose your property. Um, finances are consumed. Everything he had, I mean, it's described as camels and donkeys and oxen. But in essence, that's the investments today that people have, like you mentioned, in the stock market or your investments that you have or your business is your investment. Natural disasters, you know, uh, some high wind, a yeah. hurricane, a tornado, just the last couple of days um, on the news, here are people fighting the pandemic, supposed to lock down in their homes. And what happens? A uh, hurricane, tornado comes through and wipes out the house that you're supposed to uh, hunker down in. Well, my goodness, um, that that last tornado that touched, well, the one that happened some time ago now, um, you know, well, in recent history, but the one that touched down in Tennessee went right through where my daughter normally lives. And, uh, and she's actually home because of the COVID pandemic. And so she would narrowly miss that one. But you're right, you know, 
um, here are these black swan events. You can't control this. And we live in a world where that happens all the time. And, and the issues that Job faced and the issue we see today with coronavirus is it's out of our control. There's nothing that we can do uh, at, at this moment in time individually to stop it. Um, right. You know, it's, it's, it's just there. I, and it does impact us. You know, it, this might sound a little, you know, a little mundane, but just a couple of weeks ago, you know, I, I just have to wear my glasses for uh, my glasses yeah. for, for, for reading. And I, so I, 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 I'll be having them on and I'll pop them in my pocket, just stick them there and go out and do things. Well, I was outside, I was in a, a graveled area and glasses fell out of my pocket unintentionally. I didn't know it. And I ended up stepping oh, on no. them, destroyed my glasses, oh, no. <laughs> you know, and in a normal circumstance, you know, I would, yeah. I would go to the eye doctor and he'd, you know, and I'd replace my glasses, yeah. but I can't because they're all <laughs> shut down. I shouldn't be laughing at your misfortune, <laughs> but you know, for once it's not me stepping on my glasses. So I'm, I'm happy it was you, Kurt. Yeah. So, so, you know, so what happens is not only do you have these tragedies that take place, but just the normal everyday stuff of life, you, you can't do it. You know, you get interrupted uh, just because yeah. of it. Wow. Um, yeah. You know, what, what do you, as you look, Sean, at in, in the study guide here, as we review what happened yeah. to Job, um, what do you personally, what are the areas do you, that cause you the most stress? And, you know, as you think about the items that are taking place, the issues taking place today. Well, oh my goodness. I think I think I, I go down the complete checklist here with Job. I'm looking at this. Okay, loss of business. Well, our business is the voice of prophecy. And like everybody else, we've all been sent home and we're trying to figure out how to keep it running remotely. Uh, death of children. Do I worry about that? Yeah. My goodness, I suddenly as an adult realized why my parents continued worrying about me well into my adult years. I find myself wondering if my daughter's out driving around. Is she home yet? You know, is she going to be okay? Loss of property. You know, here I am. I'm a homeowner. I've got a mortgage to pay. And what if something happens there? Finance is consumed. Man, if I'm out of work, how long can I survive and provide for my family? Natural disasters. Well, that one's on the radar right now. Um, there's all kinds of stuff here that... Um, that Job goes through. And one of the interesting ones, Kurt, as I'm looking at this, and it shows up in this study guide. By the way, folks, you can get copies of these study guides by going to voiceofprophecy.com so that you can listen to this later as a podcast um, and uh, follow along in your own copy of this. But, Kurt, one of the things that you've put in here is marital tension. And I've noticed during the COVID epidemic, I shouldn't even smile about this because it's not in the slightest bit funny, but I guess divorce lawyers are getting very busy as husband and wife are suddenly forced back under very tense circumstances into their homes day in and day out, and it's creating new tensions. Um, My goodness, the the whole checklist of what Job goes through here, um, marital tension, fortunately, I've got a good wife who's very patient, so... um, I'm sure that she feels the tension having me in the house all the time, but I don't feel any the other way. You know, Sean, talking about the marital tension, you know, you, we see this in a, in a, you know, chapter two here and verse nine with Job. But um, I have a friend whose son is a an attorney, and he, he called mm-hmm. me a couple of weeks ago. Want to know how I was doing with uh, the stay at home order? And he mentioned I asked him about his kids, and he said, "Well, my my son was the his workload had slowed down a little bit. He was thinking about reducing staff." But he said now with the coronavirus, he said the he has more work now than he than he had before. Just oh, just no. like you mentioned, oh, no. he said so no one's going to be laid off. So it's when people that are having issues in their personal lives or in their relationships, when they're placed in this kind of stressful environment we're in, you know things begin to happen. You know they negative things well, happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is why, even though this may be, and I know some scholars estimate that the story of Job may be the oldest story in the Bible, the very earliest story that, you know, apart from creation and so on, um, it's one of the earliest stories in the Bible. It may have happened thousands of years ago, but it sure rings true. The same things happen in, you know, the 21st century as happened to Job. And I'm going down the list. Fortunately, no marital tension. It's not that my wife and I never argue, Kurt. We do. And I'm, I'm really good at arguing and causing stress. Um, but you know, for the most part, I'm looking at this, we're going through the same stuff right now. And I guess I would underline that doesn't mean that God has turned against you. That's just the way life is in this world. Yeah, that's right. And you, you know, for me, as I look at this, at the list that we're talking about, 
that's impacting us today. Um, you know, the things for me that, that trouble me the most personally is I, I'm more of a I'm, a, I'm a person that likes to solve problems. I'm a fix it kind of guy. Um, right. And so the uncertainty about the future, so to speak, like, okay, I can, I'm dealing with issues today, but how about tomorrow or a week down the road, two weeks down the road? And some of these things, yeah. there's some things in life we can't fix. There's some things in life no. that where we just have to trust in God. And and I and this is what we're up against here. And that's why for me, it it is a situation where I suppose the best lesson for me is, is um, you know, you, you literally put your life, you trust in God 100%. You know, he's the one that's leading and directing step by step. And so you need to turn to him. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we, we do. And I, I guess I should emphasize that faith then is a learned thing. It doesn't matter how you feel. You need to choose to exercise faith because sometimes when I feel a little bit panicky about the future, I I might not feel like God is in, in control, but I am still given, you know, the opportunity of choice by God, I can choose to trust. And that's an important distinction for me, Kurt, is that you might not always feel it, but you can still choose to trust and live the rest of today as if you believe God's going mm-hmm. to keep his word. And, and, and I think for Job, um, you know, going back to, to those verses, that when he got struck with this difficulties in his life, I mean, her, you know, significant difficulty, verse 20 of chapter 1 said that he fell to the ground and he worshiped. Um, and yeah. then, then verse 22, he did not, you know, in all the difficulty, he didn't charge God with wrong. And, and, and you know, I'm, and we'll see as we look at a couple more verses uh, here in, a, in, a, in the next segment. But the key here with Job was, um, you know, I, I, he gets upset, you know, he gets upset with God. We'll, we'll see that because he tries to struggle through this, which is normal for us as individuals. But, but the core value of his life, the foundation because of his relationship, because of his walk with God, when everything hit him, he turned to God. Uh, it says he Absolutely. worshiped and he, and he didn't blame God for what was coming to him. And um, I find that very significant that because he had a day-to-day walk with God, when the tough stuff of life hit, he immediately said, God, I need your help. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking, and I know we're up against another break here, I'm thinking there is a passage, I'll look it up during the break, that seems to indicate that God inhabits the praises of Israel. In other words, that when you feel distanced from God because of calamity or stress, just the act of worshiping God will draw you closer into his presence almost immediately. So I love the fact that right on the heels of this horrible disaster, Job chooses to worship God in spite of it, and uh, he maintains his relationship. Kurt, we're up against another break. We're going to have to um, let people listen to these messages and take advantage of some of the resources that are available from the Voice of Prophecy. We'll be right back after these messages. Disclosure is just one of the programs brought to you by The Voice of Prophecy, like the audio adventure program, Discovery Mountain. Discovery Mountain is a weekly Bible-based program for kids of all ages and backgrounds. Your family will enjoy faith-building stories with Jake Donovan, (laughs) Mr. Simon, and others in this small mountain town. Each summer, campers visit Discovery Mountain, where they sing songs, learn about God, and reenact a Bible story with the help of drama teachers, Miss Wendy and Miss Tamara. With 24 full episodes every year and programming every week, your family will have something uplifting to listen to every week. Listen to episodes on demand and watch video features from director Doug at discoverymountain.com or on your favorite podcast platform. That's discoverymountain.com. And we are back from the break. If this was a game of baseball, we would have just rounded, I guess, second base, and we are headed toward third base, or maybe third base, fourth base. I guess there are 
four segments. I got that all wrong. Kurt, I just get everything wrong, especially when I'm sitting in my bedroom without the guidance of um, the guidance of the powers that be in the control room. The control room, I don't even know where the control room is today. These guys are Harim's in his house, Ruben's in his house. And somehow this is all coming together. I, oh, here's a better analogy. If this was a football game, we were just done the halftime show, and now it's time for the third quarter. I think that's where we are. Yep. And we're looking at the life of Job, the fact that uh, what Job went through thousands of years ago is, well, it's indicative of what you and I go through in the same broken world that Job lived in. One of the reasons that Job has such staying power is because it examines the phenomenon of suffering that human beings go through. It's one of the most relatable books you will ever sit down and read. And so, Kurt Johnson, the author of a series of Bible studies uh, known as Peace is an Inside Job, it's an excellent series, by the way. Go to voiceofprophecy.com, look in the store. You can get a set of these for yourself so that you can go back and look at these lessons and learn to manage some of the stressors that come with the world that we're currently living in. Um, And Kurt, you were about to start us in on a Bible study on the life of Job and some of the key things that we can learn here. Yeah, yes, Sean. Uh, You know, we were just talking before the break in regards to some of the things, the issues that touched Job in his life and that are touching us today, too. Uh, from loss of property, death of children, and so on, and very significant items. Um, But also with that, the scripture on the life of Job begins to reveal some of the frustrations and emotions that he goes through. Now, we need to keep in mind that we've mentioned that that Job did turn to God. He worshipped him. He did not charge God with wrong. But he sure goes through some of the same issues of life that we were faced with. So let's take a look in the study guide at uh, beginning with Job 2, there's like five, six items that are listed here that he went through. And yeah. and, and verse Job 2, verses 7 to 10, he got touched with some, uh, physically he got touched with some painful boils. Why don't you uh, talk about some of these items here, Sean, that we, we have listed? Well, yeah. He's, he's got, it says um, Satan struck him with painful boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. And he ends up scraping himself with a piece of pottery. It's just an awful, awful picture. And here's what I think about when I look at that. It's very hard sometimes to think clearly when you live in chronic pain. That's one that I understand. I don't know how many surgeries I've had in my life. And there comes a point you come out of surgery and it didn't solve the pain and you're in pain for a year, two, three. And it's hard to focus and think clearly. So pain and difficult circumstances can really make it hard to focus on the things that you should be focusing on. I I see that there. And and also in this same passage, his wife, you pointed this out earlier, his wife says to him, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and Mm -hmm. die. So his wife now turns on him and encourages him to blame God for this. So my goodness, he's losing his support system there. His wife isn't with him on this and he lives in chronic pain. And chronic pain wears you down. I've been there. I understand that. And I'm guessing a lot of people listening today have lived in chronic pain, too. And they get how hard it is to have your mind in the right spot when you're suffering. And, and I think for Job's wife, you know, as you think about it, uh, you know, there's, only, there's a certain stress level that we as individuals can tolerate. And, and you get to yeah. a point and you just, you know, you go over the top, so to speak. And, and I think in her situation... Uh, we don't find a lot of description here, but let's say that she followed in the pattern with Job, that she was a worshiper of God, you know, and it's the loss of her children, the loss of property. Her husband now is in, you know, very sick, uh, in deep pain, and I think for her it's like it was kind of the, as we say, the last straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. You know, she yeah. she just kind of went over the edge, you know, and um, very difficult for her. Uh, and you know, I was there on. a few years ago. Oh, mm-hmm. go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead, well, I was going to say that I was there a few years ago. I remember that our family went through a very difficult time when the girls were little. And we always get together on Friday evenings and have family Bible reading and prayer. And I had had it. You know, there was an illness. There was financial stuff. There was all. And I remember praying in front of the family, you know, with my family one night saying, Lord, I just can't take anymore. I was breaking down, Kurt. I don't mind admitting mm-hmm. that. I was actually crying as I was praying it. I can't take any more. And as soon as I said that, the dishwasher exploded and started spraying water all over the kitchen floor. 
And I started laughing at that point. I said, okay, Lord, I guess I can take one more thing. Just one more yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, some people I, you know, can't. I, they snap. That's right. You know, I, I, I remember a time in my life uh, when I was a number of years, quite a few years ago now, I was going through a lot of stress, a lot of difficulty. And I, I was in a parking lot uh, at, at a grocery store and I just sat there with my hands on the steering wheel and I said, Lord, you know, I, I, I can't have one more negative thing happen in my life. I'm, I'm at the, my wit's end. I, play, mm-hmm. you know, please, please no more. Please protect me. Put a hedge about me. So I, I think it's common. All of us in this oh, life, yeah. we're humans. You know, we're, we're going to face that someday. Um, and you get to the breaking and, point. You do. That's right. And, and, and now, now you find, in, as we continue reading in verses 11 to 13, Job's mm-hmm. got three close friends, and they come to help him. Um, but uh, once you once you chat about with the Sean regards to uh, that how those well, friends reacted, yeah, I, I often put the word friends in quotation marks when I'm reading the book of Job because they come and they're doing almost everything wrong. And I guess this this mm-hmm. might be useful for those of us who are dealing with people who are suffering. They keep trying to give reasons why it had to happen and and so on. Uh, that's if you read the entire book of Job. But here in verse 12 of chapter 2, they raised their eyes from afar, did not recognize Job. They lifted their voices and wept. Each one tore his robes and sprinkled dust on his head toward heaven. And I, I look at that. His friends are almost grieving more than he is. Mm-hmm. And, and so I don't know how helpful this is, Kurt, to have your friends say, oh, my goodness, you know, Sean, you look awful. You look like you're dying. Are you okay? And I, I don't know if that's helpful or not. That doesn't seem like... I, that seems like that's adding to Job's stress at this point. Yeah, and, and, I, and I agree. You know, I, what I think was interesting in the first part of the scriptures, it says when he first arrived that the friends were quiet. They didn't say much um, because in right. their culture of, of their day, you know, when Job, the one who is grieving, is ready to talk, then you begin to engage in conversation. And, you know, that reminded me of a time, a number, quite a few years ago now, my, my dad had had a heart attack. In fact, he eventually died from that heart attack. Um, but I had uh, one of my dad's brothers, my uncle. He came to sit with us in the hospital. Um, and at that point in time, he would come and he would hardly say anything. He just sat there. And as I reflected right. back later after that incident, you know, I, and I thought of all the people that came and some would talk and they caused you to laugh and so on. And um, but the one that stuck out the most was his uncle, that he was just there. Yeah. And if I wanted to talk, I would talk. And if I didn't, you know, but he was just there. And, and I, as I look at circumstance in life, that, that meant the most to me than anything was just somebody was there. They didn't have to say anything, just their presence. Right. And I guess that's an important thought because we often uh, wonder, what am I going to say? You know, yesterday I had a friend lose his wife. It happened just yesterday. And I used to panic. What am I going to say that would be meaningful or helpful? You don't really have to say anything. Just acknowledging people um, contributes to their comfort. Just, hey, I'm, I'm here. I don't really get what you're going through, but, but let me just sympathize with you, empathize with you. Let me just be here and let you know I care. Mm. That's more helpful than the advice that people dispense. Yes. You know, you know as, as we look at the rest of these verses, you look at Job chapter 3, Job 6, yeah, um, you know, in there, Job seven, Job Job talks about he wished he wasn't born. So now we find Job, even though he trusted in God and worshipped Him, we find Job beginning to talk about his negative feelings that are coming upon him, and he right. wishes he wasn't born. Job six verses one to three, we find uh, grief is very heavy on him. Mm. I, uh, mm. I I you know in in verse six one to three. Um, he even says, you know, my, my words were rash. Um, you know, and, and I think that's something for us to, to remember as, as individuals and especially as Christians, that when we're in pain, when we are suffering, when we're in difficulty, sometimes we'll say and maybe do some things that aren't normal that we wouldn't do um, just because right. of the negative reaction. We Maybe we lash out and uh, we find that, that Job you know, this is how he's feeling. And he's saying, God, maybe it'd be better for me if I hadn't even been born. And 
Yeah, um, you know, I, I, I'll have to admit again to you, Kurt, that I have failed. the. I, I keep calling it the Job test because at the end of this book, Job comes through it magnificently. But I'm suddenly thinking of this one time there was a horrific rainstorm. This is some years back. And um, and I develop a leak in the roof. Man, that drove me crazy. And so I'm outside in the rain with my ladder trying to figure out where is the water coming in. And um, and then at, at one point I got so frustrated I came down the ladder. I was about to I was picking it up to put it away, and I tossed it on the ground. And I said to myself, I don't know why God has abandoned me. And, you know, think about the rash things that you say when you're hurting. And I know God is big enough for me to make that comment, but man, if I want to pretend that I'm so tough and grounded that I don't have these moments, I'd be lying. Yeah, and, and I think the key part here is is first to realize that, you know, God is okay with us from a human perspective, just telling him how Absolutely. we feel. You know, he's, he doesn't, yeah. you know, he, his friend to friend, you know, we are God's children. We are his, you know, we are his friend. Um and just like you and I, Sean, you know, we're, we're very good friends. And if I'm frustrated or something's upsetting me, you know, I, I very comfortably I can come in and say, Sean, and you got it, you know, and I can just dump on you. And I know what I say, <laughs> even if I was really upset, it's okay. Right. It's okay. You know, that yeah. this is, you know, and, uh, and, and so it's okay. For, and it's the same way with God. It's okay. You take one of your children, you know, our child's, our, our, our children can be, you know, one of them could be very upset, they could be hurt, they could be tired, they could be crying, they could be screaming, you know, but, but we still love mm -hmm. them, we still care about them. And, and so Job here, in fact, in Job chapter 7 and verse 6, he says, um, my days are without hope, and because of no hope, let me die. I mean, he is at, yeah. he is at wit's end here. He's, he's, Lord, I don't know what to do with life anymore. Yeah, we can all get there too. Where you know you get this sense of futility. What is the point of my life? And and that's touching on one of the deepest needs that human beings have. I mean, we we all need things like love and companionship, um, but one of the deepest things we we have, one of the deepest needs, is to know that our lives are meaningful, that they actually mean something. And when you're hurting, you get to this point where you're saying. I don't know what the point of my life is. And, you know, you pointed out a moment ago, Job said, I wish I'd never been born, and now he's wishing he was dead. Um, we get to that point where where is the meaning in my life, and that's a huge stressor. I know that we're up against another break, Kurt, but it's time, I think, in the next segment to get into maybe some of the answers and solutions that we find in this story. I'm on air today with Kurt Johnson. Uh, he is the director of our Global Bible School and the author of a series of lessons called Peace is an Inside Job. Those are available to you by looking at voiceofprophecy.com. Go to the store. You can get a set for yourself and work through these and find, well, what the Bible might call the peace that passes all understanding. We're going to take a short break, and then I'll be right back after this. Are you searching for answers to life's toughest questions? Like, where is God when we suffer? Can I find real happiness? Does my life really matter to God? Or is there any hope for our chaotic world? The Discover Bible Guides will help you find the answers that you're looking for. Visit us at BibleStudies.com or give us a call at 888-456-7933 for your free Discover Bible Guides. Study online on our secure website or have the free guides mailed right to your home. There is never a cost or obligation. The Discover Bible Guides are our free gift to you. Find answers in guides like A Second Chance at Life. You'll find answers to the things that matter the most to you. Visit BibleStudies.com and begin your journey today to discover answers to life's deepest questions. And 
we are back from our break. I'm sitting down with Kurt Johnson, director of the Voice of Prophecy's Global Bible School. This is a school you're going to want to take advantage of. I mean, some of you are still in home lockdown. You are social isolating. And what better moment to pick up a Bible and become better acquainted? We've got all kinds of resources for that, including the one we're talking about today. Peace is an inside job, a Bible study that helps you find a little more certainty and a little more calm in your life, even in the midst of crisis. You can find that at voiceofprophecy.com and look at the store. We're looking at the life of Job, Kurt, and... And we've talked about some of the big stressors that he had, and we've recognized that nothing has changed in human history. The same things that stressed out Job, the big things, loss of income, loss of family, loss of health, these are the same things that stress us out today. And uh, in this segment, as we sort of wrap up our time together, maybe um, start walking us through some of the solutions that we find in the book of Job, because I know resonate with Job's stress. What I want to do now is resonate with Job's solution and come out of this maybe with a little more certainty in my life. Yes, I, I agree, Sean. And let, let me just walk through a few passages that I have found that have been helpful to me in my study. Uh, Job chapter 6, verse 24, Job came to the point where he basically said, Lord, teach me. Um, he asked God to help him to understand and to learn to trust him that no matter what, he knew that God was the creator and that God was the one that could give him some instruction to deal with life. And so he turned to God in prayer. He began to pray and say, Father, help me to understand. Help me to be able to develop a closeness with you. And, and Job tied with that in Job 26, um, verses 1 to 14. He begins to talk about, Lord, give me understanding. Um, right. Help me to learn how to live without all the answers in life. Um, and, and then he begins to talk about in Job 26, a little bit more, he talks about understanding God's power, that God is all powerful, that God is creator, that God's all understanding. Um, and, and I'm reminded that in Genesis chapter, uh, chapter one, verse one, it says in the beginning, God created the heavens, right. God created the earth. He created everything. So Job begins to turn to God as creator and say, God, because you have created me, because you're in control of every aspect of my life, I ask you now to help me to know how to deal with the issues that I, that I face. And, and, and Job did a, did a good job with that because it says that he turned to God and he mm -hmm. released his life to him and said, God, I just put everything in your hands, that which I do not understand, that which I do not have solutions to completely, I release it to you. And Lord, I, I trust in you. If you can take care of the flowers, as you say in Scripture, if you can take care of the right. birds of the air, then I know you can take care of me. And uh, so that's right. in those. So God, so He began to turn to Him, and um, and then out of that, I'm, it just reminds me, Sean. There's a lot of verses in Scripture that come out that help us to to have the same experience that Job ended up with, and it, and it says that that in Job 38, that God gave Job twice as much as he had before. Now, sometimes right. we look at this as simply maybe his material wealth, but I look at it and see it's a blessing that God spiritually blessed Job as twice as much that he had. Right. And we often come out the other side of a crisis stronger and better than we were before. You know, in hindsight, I keep saying, okay, it wasn't your will, God, that I suffered, but look at what you did out of that suffering. I believe that my faith is deeper and my relationship with you is stronger than it was before I went into that. So even though it wasn't your idea or your plan, you turned it for good, and I think I'm a better person today. Yes, and, and, and I think that's where, where Job, you know, that's what ended up in his life. Um, when the tragedies were over, when time went by, he was able to be strengthened from it. Um, and I, I think of my own life, you know, I, I remember just a few years ago, uh, you know, I, I went through a, a great period of grief. I mean, it was within, uh, my, my mom passed away in, wow. in one year, a year, a year later, my, my brother passed away. Uh, a couple months that. later, my stepfather-in-law passed away. 
two uncles passed away, a close friend passed away, all within like three months um, hmm. of, of everyone. You know, it, and and it was a very heavy time. And I I remember I remember uh, one of our staff at the Voice asking me how I was doing, and I said, you know, we want to know the truth. I'd like to walk over in that corner over there and sit down and just hide myself for a bit <laughs> and have a good cry yeah. and then then go for a long walk and uh, and life will be good. And you know, and out of all those tragedies of life, uh, I found strength in God and and my faith grew in God and and I know that you still hurt, but when you come out the other side, it's like, yes, God was with me, God is with me, and there is a better tomorrow, and we know by scripture, that God's plan for all of us is to take away all pain and hurt. In fact, in scripture and revelation, it says that in right. the new earth, that, that there's no, there's not going to be any more pain or tears or dying, that it will be a land in the way that we would like it to be right now. Absolutely. That's one of my favorite passages in the Bible. That's in Revelation 21, the first five verses. You know, we're going to have tears in this life. And uh, and God's promise is, look, I, I, I'm not missing your tears. I see the pain you're in. But my guarantee to you is that one day I will personally reach out and wipe away your tears, and you will have shed the last one you will ever shed. Um, Kurt, we have minutes to go, and I know there's a lot of practical stuff tagged to the end of this study guide. Let's look at some of that because, you know, there are Bible verses here. You really need to get a study, a copy of this, Psalm 56, you can trust God and learn not to fear. Psalm 145, God hears every call for help that we utter. He doesn't miss any of those. Um, there's all kinds of great suggestions here, but let's look at some practical helps here now and apply it to our own lives. Um, what are some of the suggestions that come out of a study of Job that can help us adapt to trying circumstances and higher levels of stress? You no, know, Sean, be, before we, we go there, I just want to refer to one, if it's okay, to one of the scriptures. Yeah, 2 absolutely. Timothy 1, 2 Timothy 1, 7. It says, yeah. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. And when, when I've faced difficulty in life, this one has meant a lot to me because a lot of times we're, we are fearful. We, you know, what's come upon me. But, God, but it says that God does not want us to have fear, but he wants us to have power. That means God's power, the Holy Spirit to be with us, to comfort us. Holy Spirit is called the comforter to give us strength. God wants us to have love. He wants us to be in a setting of peace. And I like the word sound mind. You know, our minds can mm -hmm. do all kinds of crazy things to us when we're in difficulty. But God says, I want your mind to be sound. I want it to be uh, not fearful, not going all kinds of crazy directions. And so when we pray Excellent. to God, when we come to God, um, he has said, I'll remove your fear. I'll give you my presence in the Holy Spirit. You will find love and peace to surround you in your life. And I will calm your mind. Uh, I, I just wow. love that. It just it's a it's a great solution to ask God for that and He's promised to give it to us. Excellent. Okay, help me help me help me take some of these lessons and apply them to my life. Okay. Well what I have found and we listed some of these here in, in the study guide is we the first step that I think that Job did that we need to do in our lives is to recognize that we have a need outside of ourselves. In other words, we have limitations. Mm -hmm. And, and that, yeah, we sure do. obviously, that, that need outside of ourself, for us, of course, is God. He's our creator. Um, the Ab the second absolutely. point... Absolutely. Some of us are more limited than others, Kurt. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. And, and the second point here that I have found helpful is to uh, choose to believe God's promises that we find in Scripture. You know, we, like you mentioned a few moments ago, you know, God is my trust. I will not fear God will hear every call for help. You know, there's a whole list of promises here in this lesson. And what I, what I did in my own personal life is I've taken these promises and I write them down on a three by five card. I put them in my pocket. A lady can, you know, they can carry them in their purse or even on your cell phone. You can take these and sure. I read them several times a day. And, and what I have found in my own life when I'm going through difficult times is when I'm beginning to feel those that difficulty, just pull that card out, read that promise, claim it. Say, God, I ask you to make this take place in my personal life, and he will do it. Right. 
I personally believe that God loves it, Kurt, when we pull out a Bible and we point to a promise and say, Lord, I'm claiming this one. I'd like you to keep this in my life. And as this COVID thing started spreading around, I started spending a lot of time in Psalm 91 because there are an awful lot of promises there that bring you a little peace of mind in the midst of a crisis. And I really do. I I not only point to them, I read them out loud and I discuss that promise with God. And I find that incredibly helpful. Mm. Yes. Now, and, and point three here, Sean, as we study the Bible, as you just mentioned, when you see God acting in behalf of a promise, then, then thank him for it, claim it, because that's a building Excellent. block of building your trust and faith. And each time you see God act, that, that strengthens you. Um, a, a fourth point we have listed here is to pray, to talk to God about your concerns as you would to a friend on a telephone or by letter, just like we're talking today. I, I remember yeah. a few years ago, a few years ago, um, I was uh, I was talking with a lady and and she was sharing with me a lot of difficulties she had in her life and I I uh, I, I mentioned to her at the end I said my I said would you like me to pray for you she said yes I would and so I started to pray and she interrupted me right in the beginning and she said Kurt I've never prayed before can you explain wow. to me what we're doing and so I explained to her and and and, and so if, if someone listening has never really prayed before. It's very simple. You know, it just, I always like to start with my Heavenly Father, or some people start with mm-hmm. God, you know, with the first name, just like I say, Sean. Um, and then right. you, just talk, you just talk normal, and you share with God the things going on in your life, and you claim that promise, God, please make that take place. Yeah, and sometimes I actually write my prayers because, you know, I like to... I like to um, it's like writing a letter. I've written prayers out to mm-hmm. God, and I find that useful because two years from now, I might go back and find that written prayer and discover just how much God did in the last two years to answer that prayer. Yeah, that's right. Uh, step five that we've written down in the let- study guide is to listen to God's promises, just like we've been talking about, that He wants to put them in uh-huh. our lives. Step six, thank Him, what He's doing, what He's going to do, and what you know He'll do in the future. And what I find helpful, too, is to find a Christian friend that we can talk to and pray with concerning our needs. And keep in mind, as Job did, that in God we find strength and we do find victory over our our needs. But key is to turn to God those promises that he has given us. And I think one of the key things that happens there is that you start to defeat the sense of loneliness. If you are discussing this with God and claiming his promises and asking him, suddenly you're not facing this all by yourself anymore, and you discover that God's presence can be very real in the midst of all of this. You know, and Sean, as we so. face the COVID virus that's taking place today, um, one of the things I think that can be helpful from a practical standpoint is for all of us because we're, we're stuck at home, is to assess yeah. our responsibilities. You know, you do a little less if you can. In other words, find a little free yeah. time. Um, if, you know, we can go outside, we can exercise, get some fresh air, uh, eat some nourishing food, you know, uh, make sure we, we drink plenty of water, do those things we know that are healthful. And one of the things that I have found that's really helpful for me is to laugh once in a while, to find yeah. something that's, that's uh, you yeah. know, that causes me to laugh, a good joke, a smile on I your face. I enjoy it. The- I enjoy that, too. And look at that. Kurt, we're out of time, man. That's it. The lessons are pieces and inside job. You can find them at voiceofprophecy.com in the store. Man, Kurt, thanks for joining me this week. Until next time, this is Sean Boonstra. You've been listening to Disclosure. Stay safe, everybody, and stay connected to God. Mm-hmm.